character I've ever written this on. I'm like, I'm doing something different. I'm going to make the dad be nice. New era. When dealing with jerky people, I like to look a person in the eye and very calmly tell them what's on my mind. That afternoon, as I crossed the obstacle path of newly dumped refuse, oh, she comes upon a guy who's dumping trash in her neighborhood. I said in a deliberately prim tone, I live over here, and it is very upsetting to have to find my way around this trash. It is very ugly and can probably give me cancer. It's not going to give you cancer. The guy blew me off. He swished his free hand at me like a crossing guard. Come on, please. I've got another load. i got to get out of here. Are you bringing more of it back over here, I asked. I had moved far enough away that I had to raise my voice over the hum of his truck, far enough away that he tossed the final bag. It landed with a slap and jellied around, settling. I did not want to know what was in there. It could be dead people, people who died living too close to the poison ocean, people who had been living in some area rich people wanted to move into. I heard all sorts of stories about life in the city, the intensified need for a stable place to live as whole neighborhoods disappeared beneath the water. The whole black market trash dumping racket was deeply grisly. Not precisely here, no, the guy shook his head. He pulled off his gloves and tossed them into the flung open door to his truck, seeming suddenly more naked without them. Oh, he's topless. But there's nothing to stop me, you know. People shouldn't be living out here. This place is going to get worse, you know. My stuff is inflammable, but I know other guys who dump up here. And the next quake, depending on the friction, this whole patch could go up. You wouldn't even know it hit you. Kaboom, like a bomb, vaporized. All right, I snapped. It gave me an electrical bad feeling to think about my neighborhood exploding, to hear this guy speak of it so casually, as if we could just pack up and go anyway, as if there were lots of places to live. Enough already, I barked. I only want to let you know that you're a jerk, a really bad person, and that your actions have shitty consequences. People live here, and we're all having to, we all have to live with your trash. It's bad enough living there with the ocean's trash, but this makes it even worse. I took a deep breath. That was all I had to say. That's about all I have to say, I said. <laughs> it's my birthday, and I have to get going. Your birthday? Where are you headed? He was smirking at me in an annoying way. The mall. You want a lift? I can take you. In your toxic mobile? No, thank you. I would like to live to be 14. It's fine in the cab. It's clean, actually. No way, I wouldn't ride with a jerk anyway, it's against my religion. The guy laced his fingers together and stretched them so they sounded in a series of pops. Have it your way, just trying to help. You're going to have a terrible time getting there walking. A big piece of the hillside along the freeway fell off and all this other shit came tumbling. The hill over there, I asked, pointing to my most optimistic trail. <coughs> yep, and it's going to rain too, so you might just find yourself mud surfing to the mall on a piece of trash if you wind up in the wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> Which you might, since it's all a mess down there. I'd go back home if I were you. He started to climb into the cab. Down the way, all I could see was mess, it was true. But all I ever saw was mess. I cursed the bike thief again, she had a bike stolen. I wouldn't even be tempted to ride with some burly half-naked dude who was not practicing, as Marsha called it, right livelihood. Meaning <laughs> that the way he makes his money is jacked and causes hurting pain to others. There's really no cliff down there, I asked. The cliff had followed the curve of the freeway below. I could walk it until the turnoff for the mall and then clamber over a mostly fallen down fence and then dodge cars to the other side and then hike further towards the giant mall sign that flashed colored pictures of all the things for sale inside its dome. Today I had expected to see shots of trendy flashing over the freeway, pixelated, lit up trendies, maybe even a video. The thought of it sent shivers of anxious happiness into me, and I wanted to be there already. I had so much to do. Hit the target, find a trendy video on one of their TVs, become inspired, note the shade of lipstick slicking her mouth, slink over to the makeup aisle, steal that precise glossy hue, hustle myself into the public toilets by the food court, entwine colored pipe cleaners into my hair, crayon my eyes, and celebrate my birthday with my first lipstick ever. Though I had bought, brought along some carob in case my plan went awry. She needs a carrot for lipstick. It wouldn't, though. I knew it wouldn't because I was full of freaky psychic vibrations. I was a physical manifestation of the way the planet had felt on this exact day 13 years ago. I had guessed correctly that my mother's bees had vanished. I was being rewarded for speaking my mind so maturely to this dumb guy with the ride to the mall. I would arrive with time to spare, assuring that I would be the most trendy of all the aspiring trendies. I didn't even mind the tide of thunderclouds rising in the sky. It was like evil Mother Nature herself was showing up to witness my special day and total triumph, ready to shower me with all her acidy rains and flashing bolts. Sure, they were poise and destruction, but they were all she had to gift me with. I turned to the truck, now in motion, carefully backing out on the muddy ditch its wheels had sunk into, pulling away from abandoned, the abandoned bags and their terrible leaking insides. Dude had pulled a jacket over his nudity, a sort of positive omen that confirmed I should in fact accept his ride. Hey, I shouted over the chugging roar. I would like a ride, thank you. To the front entrance and as quickly as you could safely drive there, please. He leaned across the cab and popped the door open. Palm-sized splats of water began crashing into the mud as I lifted myself inside the chugging truck. The cab of the truck was impressively clean for a vehicle that hauled toxic waste, though the man, whose name was Teddy, had left his soiled gloves frighteningly close to the passenger seat. They shone with a substance I guessed to be the oil of death itself. I shifted toward the door, which I had wisely checked for working handles before sailing myself inside. I'm not a fool, just daring. Plus, Marsha had enrolled me in self-defense classes since I could stand without wobbling. I couldn't honestly say I could take this big dude in a fight, but I could promise to make him regret he didn't prey upon a different girl. 
Teddy's plastic jacket was splattered with muck and an oniony stink rolled off him. Are you afraid you'll die, I asked him. The splats reached up to the skin beneath his jaw. It was like driving with someone who had a blood-sucking monster tearing into their jugular, but they just kept their hands on the wheel, whistling along to the metal streaming out from the truck stereo, oblivious. I will die, he informed me easily. And am I afraid to? Yes. Are you? I waved his cleverness away. You know what I mean, I insisted. Are you afraid this job we do will kill you? You've got stuff all over your skin. You don't know what it is. They probably tell you it's not cancerous. They do, he nodded, tapping fast to the music on his steering wheel. But they're probably totally lying. Probably. He kept nodding, now it's time to the music. He reached out with a finger and flicked it louder. I just raised my voice. So then aren't you scared that this job will kill you? Teddy's bobbing head was maybe a yes, or maybe it was a deep devotion to the abrasive music he enjoyed. This music was like the oral equivalent of whatever was in those bags he tossed. Up ahead, Trendy flashed on the sign for the mall, blurring beneath the rain that came down on Teddy's windshield. So much and so sudden, like evil Mother Nature was tossing her own sacks of trash down onto this, her dumping ground. Listen, kid, mellifera, I informed. Mellifera? Like bees, I informed further. The truck swung into the parking lot for the mall. It took no time at all to get here in a car. I was amazed. It was like hiking into another country on foot. Even with the side of the cliff fall and busted into the freeway, it was easier by car. I guess that's why people keep driving them. Um, Teddy, the trash dumper's truck, purred. I bet whoever employed him in his unethical job made sure his tank was washed full of premium oil. Teddy suddenly leaned over me, sending a stab of fight or flight panic into my system. I raised my leg to kick him in the face, but he only clicked the door open. The poison rainwater blew in the crack, beating on my leg. Teddy sat behind the steering wheel, seemingly unaware that he'd almost just had a flip-flop jam down his throat. <laughs> you're going to die, he said. Don't kid yourself. I don't know what kind of happy horseshit your mom or dad might be telling you, but if you think that me not dumping some shit in your backyard is going to make anything better, you're crazy. If it would, I'd stop. He raised his hand like he was making an oath. The edge of his palm was raw red, oozing like the edges of his trash bags. He saw me looking at it, turned it back at himself, had a glance at it, wiped it on his knee. We were at the mall's front door. Behind the glass, the space was all blossom color like a pinball machine. It's too late to care, Teddy said, finishing up, so go have a birthday. Where are you going to get yourself? I'm going to steal a lipstick from Target. This made Teddy laugh. He stuck his hand into his jeans and came out with some money. He unstuck a piece of cash from the glob of it and handed it to me with his sore, oozy hand. The bill dangled limp from his fingers. Buy yourself some lipstick. It's like I'm paying you to dump trash in your hood, he laughed. I wanted it, even though I knew it was what Marsha called blood money, which unlike the money that comes from right livelihood, is money that comes from other people's pain. But I guess what he was saying that it was my pain the money was coming from, so I sort of had a right to it. I would have preferred it to never have been touched by his rotting leukemia hand, but I grabbed it by the corner and thanked him. I would still steal the lipstick from Target. Marsha had taught me that some places were okay to steal from, never pay, and in other stores it was only okay to pay, never steal, and the list of two were orderly in my head, with Target being a lead on the never pay list. But the money would come in handy for something else, a place where stealing was either too difficult or else interfered with some good person collecting the right livelihood. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's okay or that I'm allowing you, I said sternly. I would stop you if I could. I pushed the truck door open wide with my flip-flops. The rain had given the pavement a hot, corrosive stink. I didn't know if I should let the rain rinse Teddy's hand germs from the bill or if the rain would just make it worse. I would too, Teddy waved his leprosy hands in a farewell salute as he backed up out of the lot. I stopped this whole thing. Thanks. The dresser drawer only collected things I couldn't use when painting my face. Ketchup packet.